Paul, it's very exciting to be here today. Just tell me a little bit about WNG Warwick University and what we've got here in this simulator. Okay, WMG is a multidisciplinary department. We work with industry. We're trying to help solve real world problems uh, so that their businesses will work better. And the simulator itself is? Okay, well, we're really excited with the changes in automotive technology at the moment. The move towards smart and connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles, eventually driverless vehicles. And we see that there's going to be huge advantages for everyone. Uh, so, for instance, at the moment, 90% of accidents are caused by human error. So, theoretically, we can make life safer. We can improve energy efficiency with more control. Similarly, we can reduce congestion. The average driver spends 235 hours a year behind the wheel. Imagine we could use that time for something more useful. So in here then, you've have you developed this simulator here? Is it the only one in the UK or even around the world? We, there are a lot of simulators around, but we've got some unique features here. We're particularly interested in being able to test driverless, smart and connected technology. So there are two features that we think are unique. Firstly, we, are able to t we want to be able to test any vehicle, any technology within here to be able to bring anything in here. So effectively, we're simulating the environment rather than the vehicle. And secondly, when I talk about the environment, that means not just the, the sights and the sounds and the traffic and the road surface and people. Nowadays, cars are becoming connected, so we need to be able to create the wireless environment in here so that the car can be fully connected but under our control. And so we're built in a screened room which keeps everybody else's signals out, and it means we can keep control of the signals that are in here. Environmental factors, then, is that part of what you're saying here, that a simulator is great, but you know, if you know that in 100 yards' time a dog's going to run in front of you, you know it's going to happen, you're anticipating it happening. Is there any way that this simulator is different to that and the random factors can be thrown at you? Absolutely. So at the moment, there are some really exciting trials going on with driverless technology up and down the country. So for instance, in Milton Keynes and in Greenwich, and I couldn't possibly take away the value that those give us. But if you imagine in the real world, it's pretty complicated. You can't really control things. As you say, dogs could run out. And actually, a lot of the time, nothing very interesting happens. What we'd like to be able to do is to take those interesting instances and replay them, but in a nice, safe, repeatable, risk-free way. And that's what the simulator is about. Now, is there any, any uh, if you looked at it as a simulator where, you know, I was asleep, yes. it, how would that factor in? Okay, if you're asleep, then we could actually look at maybe different mechanisms that you might be woken up and how you would respond to that. I think the fact that we put, I hesitate to say, real people in here, I think it's important we get customers along, the people who are eventually going to use these vehicles. We'd like to design the technology with them so that they will work with people, but people will then ultimately want them, trust them, and buy them. Because being asleep, I use that as a very random example, yeah. but people might look at a driverless technology yeah. and think, this is great, I can jump yeah. in in the morning, yeah. I can shut my eyes and I could end up yeah. in Coventry, but can that happen? I think there are stages. So at the moment, there's a long way to being fully driverless from journey beginning to journey end. But a lot of people's cars now have got an autonomous feature, maybe automatic braking, maybe self-parking. It is happening. And it may well happen in stages ge geographically. So for instance, you might get that last mile of the route from the station into the city centre, you might use a driverless car. I can't begin to think, you know, the people that are behind the development of this, how, how would they put together two random scenarios, like we talk about a dog walking yes. in front of you, as well as a, a lady with a pram. So how does the car, does it veer left and then veer right? How does it... Actually, that's a really interesting point you make. And actually choosing those use cases and scenarios from from almost the infinite number of things that can happen in a city is actually one of our first challenges, is so that we can represent a nice broad spread of the likely things that could happen so that we can test the cars as comprehensively as we can. Well, I'm going to jump in this thing in a minute and have a go. Okay. Hopefully, I, hopefully I won't have a smash. But what about learning to drive? Would, is there a, a use for this? Could I, in five years' time, take my driving test in this simulator and then go on the road <laughs> having passed? Well, Probably not something we're looking at, but there are lots of simulators up and down the country that are used for driving, maybe for helping people drive more energy efficiently, maybe for, like in um, motor racing, training drivers. So there are simulators that are specifically designed for that. Maybe ours could be used for that, but it's not the focus. And similar to the aircraft industry, I mean, autopilot's yep. been regularly used for many, many years, and there's, you know, different... You know, we talk about Boeing and Airbus, yep. they have different ways of yep. using their autopilot. But is that... Are you using the technologies from those markets to assist you? I think it's a little different. I mean, in a, in a plane, there is a trained pilot there as well. Our hope is that just normal members of the public can use this technology, so we do need to think a little differently. So it needs to be usable, and that's why we need to design it with them. 
Now tell me about the background behind this. We've obviously got JLR involvement. How, how is it funded, Paul? Um, the simulator itself was funded through the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council on a capital award, so we were very fortunate to win that award from them. And now we've got projects that are funded in different ways, especially from Innovate UK. Mm. Okay, and you've got some very clever graduates coming through that are part or integral in the in this success? We've got quite a broad research team. As you can imagine, there's lots of disciplines that are needed. So everything from electrical engineering, computer science, cyber security is a big thing nowadays, human factors, and the business. The business is going to change. We're moving very much towards mobility, maybe, rather than just purchasing cars. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to have to jump in and have a go. Thanks, Paul. Thanks very much for coming. So I'm inside the car. I'm pressing the start button, as you would in a normal car as you jump in in the morning I'm putting myself in gear in an automatic mode and I'm off and I can already feel the environmental factors I can feel the vehicle it does feel genuinely like I'm driving a car as I move the steering wheel to the left or to the right as I even accelerate as we go through what looks to be or should be a 30 limit so we may have to slow down a bit but we've got it we've got uh, hazards to the left, hazards to the right, which we, we've got to avoid. And you can see how this can benefit you if you were, for example, um, in a public service, and you, were, you, you were in the police or you were in the, you know, in the fire service and you were looking at simulators like this to give you additional training uh, because it is so lifelike. And we come up to a, a crossroads, we've got traffic lights, I'm on the brakes. You can feel a, a, a little skid there. We're obviously going to have to wait until they go, go green. And there we go, and we're on green and we're off. So driverless technology, they can use this to, to basically test the vehicle to make sure that before they do any testing on roads or on circuits, they've covered pretty much all the bases beforehand. And it is, I have to say, it really is uh, evidence of, of this Oh, I've just gone through a red light, would you believe it? Um, I'll probably have a police siren behind me in a minute, but there you go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up here now on the left-hand side. Now this particular simulator does have motion sensors with it as well. So if you did want to feel, uh, you know, a, a, the car manoeuvring left to right or, or up and down, you can actually do that as well. It is a fascinating experience here at uh, the WNG department at the Warwickshire University. In fact, it's been a, a fascinating day where we've learned about how the future of driverless cars and autonomous vehicles is being developed here in the UK.